To create an isometric drawing of this triangular prism, I'm going to first pick a starting point. And the starting point I'm going to pick is this corner right here. The reason I'm going to pick this starting point is from here I can go up and to the right. So I'm going to transfer that point onto my graph paper. From that point, I'm going to go up 5 to this point. And connect those points together. Next, I'm going to go to the right 7. So from this point, I'm going to go to the right 7. But when I go to the right on isometric dot paper, I'm not going to connect horizontally. I'm going to actually connect to the right and down 7. When I go to the right and down, I'm actually going right on isometric dot paper. And I'm going to connect those points together. So far, I've made this right angle. That right angle is right here. The next thing I want to do is connect this hypotenuse. To connect this hypotenuse, I'm going to connect this point to this point on my isometric dot paper. If you notice, as I go, I'm not hitting all the dots on the isometric dot paper. But that makes sense. If I made this front face triangle on a geo board, I could connect the rubber band up and down and to the left and to the right. But when I connected the rubber band here along the hypotenuse, I'm not going to hit all the pegs as I go. Just like on the dot paper, I'm not going to hit all the dots along the way. Next, I want to give this shape depth. To give this shape depth, I'm going to add in another line that represents the depth of 2. So from this point, I'm going to give the shape a depth of 2. And I'm also going to give the shape depth from this point. Now I'm going to draw in this back edge. That back edge will be the connection of this dot and this dot. Now I've drawn in all the lines that I'm going to see. I'm going to draw in some of these hidden lines now. From this point, I can go back 2. I'm going to draw in that hidden line with a dashed line. And from that point, I can connect to the right 7. When I go to the right, I'm going to go down and to the right. And since this is going to be a hidden line, I'm going to draw it in with a dashed line. And finally, from this back corner, I'm going to connect up five. Again, this will be a hidden line, so I'm going to connect with a dashed line. So here is my triangular prism drawn isometrically. Next, we need to create a net of the triangular prism. A net is a two-dimensional drawing where this shape has been cut apart and all the faces have been laid flat. I'm going to start my 
net by drawing in this back rectangle. This back rectangle has a width of 2 and a height of 5. So I'm going to start by drawing in a 2 by 5 rectangle. So this 2 by 5 rectangle is this back edge, this back face that is 2 by 5. Next I'm going to go to this bottom rectangle. This bottom rectangle is 2 by 7. Well I've already used this 2 so I'm just going to keep going 7 this way. So this 2 by 7 rectangle is this bottom face that is 2 by 7. The next rectangle I'm going to add in is this top face. This top rectangle that's at a slant. That top rectangle that's at a slant has a width of 2, so I can borrow the 2 that's already on my net. But I need to figure out how long this line is. I need to figure out how long the hypotenuse is of my triangle. To figure out how long the hypotenuse is, I'm going to use the Pythagorean theorem. 5 squared plus 7 squared equals c squared. 25 plus 49 equals c squared. 25 and 49 gives me a grand total of 74. So my hypotenuse is going to be the square root of 74 long. I'm going to use my calculator to approximate the square root of 74. The square root of 74 is about 8.6 long. So this hypotenuse is exactly square root of 74 long. It's approximately 8.6. I can use that 8.6 on my net. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, and a little bit more than halfway. So this length is approximately the square root of 74 long. Next, I need to put in the two triangles of my prism. The triangle is 5 by 7 by the square root of 74. And it has to form a right angle. So I'm going to borrow either this 5 or this 7. Let's start by borrowing this 7. So I need to make a triangle that has legs 7, and 5 and a hypotenuse square root of 74. So I can either put this sev or the 5 here or here. But this net has to work out so if I fold it back up this edge lines up with this edge. So I'm going to want to go 5 from here. If I put the 5 on this side, when I folded up my net, my faces wouldn't line up correctly. So now I have a right triangle that is 7 by 5. When I connect from here to here, I should have a length of the square root of 74 long. If 
I did a quick check with a ruler and I measured this length and compared it to this length, they should be the same. Now one of the useful things of a net is I can see the surface area. All of these faces together, all of their areas added together, add up to create the surface area. To find the total surface area, I'm going to add all of these areas together. So the area of this rectangle is 2 by 5. 2 times 5 is 10. I could also count my squares. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Well, that makes sense. I have two rows of 5. And here I have two rows of 7. So my area here should be 14. Now this rectangle is a little bit trickier. To figure out the area of this rectangle, I have a height of 2 and a base length of the square root of 74. So my total area is 2 square roots of 74. And that kind of makes sense. If this is the square root of 74 long, to find the area I have 1, 2 of those. Now I have two triangles. To find the area of a triangle, it's 1 half times base times height. Well, in this case, my base is 7, and my height is 5. So I have 35 halves for this area. And this triangle is going to also be 35 halves. So those are all the pieces that make up my area. 10 and 14 and 2 square roots of 74 and 35 halves and 35 halves. Now I need to combine my like terms. 10 and 14 gives me 24. And these are just rational numbers. I can add 35 halves and 35 halves Denominator's the same. Add my numerators. To simplify that, 70 divided by 2. Well, 70 divided by 2 is 35. 24 and 35 give me a grand total of 59 and 2 square roots of 74 and that's going to be in centimeters squared.